Good morning, party people. It is time for another Bricks and Minifigs shopping vlog. I'm here with my husband, Ross. Howdy. We've been traveling a lot over the last month, but a few days ago, we actually came to this Bricks and Minifigs and found so many good rare sets. And I hope they're not gone. So we're gonna rush in and see if they're still here. Let's go, let's go. Let's do it. You ready? Bricks, bricks and, and Minifigs, Bricks and Bricks and Bricks and Minifigs. Woo. Oh, I almost forgot Benny. Now we're ready. Thank you, Ross. Y'all, we just got into Bricks and Minifigs here and they are fully stocked with such good sets. They have like a whole Lego Ideas buy-in, tons of Star Wars. So let me grab Ross and let's get started. He's so excited. They have a whole bunch of incredible things. I'm so excited. We were really worried that they were gonna like sell out of it overnight. I was really anxious. So they're still rocking. They have the, uh, the Disney castle as well as this old uh, Atlantis set here. Uh, this is from Lego Movie 2. This is really what I'm kind of excited for seeing right now. I really enjoy this set, the UFO line. I can't remember the name of the actual theme, but they had a lot of playability in the UFOs, so like this would light up. Alien Conquest. Alien, no, that was the other one. Uh, well, it says it on the thing. Oh, well, there you go. I was wrong. So yeah, Alien Conquest. There's two around the same time, but it just looks like a little cute UFO. Like I like, like it's not scary aliens. They're just like fun aliens. I like that one. They still really eat cute. your brains though. So just careful with that. And then over here, they have the giant mini scale Hogwarts castle. We actually just saw this one up at Legoland and it is so impressive. And I just learned recently, this is the only way to get the four house heads of Hogwarts, all the different minifigs for it. Then the little boats are really neat too. It's just so intricate for being at such a small scale. Okay, so here's the Batcave Clayface invasion. I've actually never seen this set in person before this is really cool um my favorite little easter egg there is ace the bat hound just chilling i really like Clayface as well he's a big big giant clay monster and then with the sun shining in it's a little hard to see these but they do have the jurassic park one as well as mickey and minnie but then this one here too from the lego movie too this was queen whatever wannabe's not so evil space palace let me know in the comments which of the lego movies you liked the most i remember seeing the lego movie 2 in theaters and the songs would not get out of my head it was just such a cute movie but i love batman up here too all decked out in his his silvery fun outfit yeah the lego movie 2 sets were just really fun but then looking over here we have some monkey kid avatar they have a really good selection of sets here including a lot of the three-in-one style sets like the pet shop here and then this giraffe build they have a really wide variety like that's so much fun i'm really excited about the demon bull king set over here from monkey kid ah just monkey kid is just it's weird you know it's an underrated theme but it's also a rated theme i just really love these mechs that they have from here and then this this is a big part of uh of me I've been like playing Overwatch for the last four years. Emily hates it. And I got into Overwatch because of the Lego sets. I just was interested in like how these minifigures looked. Like she looks really cool. I really like Farah's minifigure right there. It's just amazing. It's a bummer that Lego stopped making them, but I guess what are you gonna do? They have all of the ideas set put on a shelf, which is pretty sweet. Really excited about this one. I love this set. Absolutely love this Sonic set. And I think this is the weakest point of the Sonic set was just this like brick built Dr. Robonic. I'm really excited that they're making like a more molded version of him. Winnie the Pooh, we like to call this one of the gateway Lego sets. A lot of people get into Lego because of this set. Tron's really cool. I don't know much about Tron. All I really know is that I really want to ride the new ride in Disney World. This is the Tiago boat that Tiago built. <laughs> and then the Flintstones. This is kind of an underrated idea set, I think. I, I, it just looks cool. It's really groovy, you know, really dig Very it. Very groovy. And then finishing it off with Seinfeld, as well as the other sitcom sets. It looks like they have all of them here. Wait, do they have Queer Eye? Maybe no, except Queer Eye. Big Bang Theory. But it's cool. We actually, in New York last week, we got to visit the friend's apartment. You know, it's not a real place. It's just a studio. But we got to, like, be outside of it. They live in Greenwich Village, which was really cool. We took some pictures. It was fun. All right, so I'm taking a look at the Minecraft sets. I think I'm going to be grabbing this one mostly because of the dolphin and the turtle I'm really excited about. This is the OG crafting box. They made three of these. It was just kind of assortment of different pieces. You could build different things. This one is great. I hear good things about this one and the second one. I think they have the third one. We'll check it out. I'm also thinking about grabbing this one too, the nether portal, because uh, this is a really good build, I think, for the ghast farm here nothing too crazy just a bunch of good bricks desert output is also something sorry desert outpost the desert outpost is also something some oh man the desert outpost <laughs> the desert outpost the desert outpost is also something i'm thinking about getting because i like the little puppy look at the little puppy by the way we're getting emily to play minecraft later today I'm i got a gaming stoked. pc i'm so excited <laughs> so this is the crafting box 3.0 so they don't have 2.0 this is 3.0 again good part pack 
I might pass on this one because I think I have most of the mobs already. And then the blaze bridge. I am thinking about getting this one. I might hold off a little bit, but I really like the blazes. The mobs here are really cool and they spin. Pew, pew, pew. This is cool. Some of you old 90s kids might remember this. I barely remember this actually. So. I've never even seen these before. Yeah, I didn't this know is this a was whole, real. Like interesting line that Lego did. So there's these tiny little racers. I had this one because I remember having that little yellow guy. But I remember pretty much what you do is you slam the car and when they crash, it ejects the racer. So totally safe, like crash test dummy style. I think this is the first time I've seen these in like 20 years. So it's really cool to see this. This is an interesting piece of Lego history. This is when Lego was going through the fine, awkward find myself phase. <laughs> Um, and you know, Bionicle ended up saving the day along with Star Wars and Harry Potter. So this was one of those failed themes that almost bankrupted Lego. One yeah. of the clerks the other day was telling me that this one here is worth like 150 Holy. on its own because it was exclusive to Europe or maybe it was that one. I actually kind of forget. <laughs> there was a lot going on, but this one here, it was like really hard to find it somehow. So yeah, that one alone is 150. So it's kind of cool to see the full set. This is everything that was included in the, the Zalix series. <laughs> What a weird looking thing. So there's a few sets that are here today that I'm really, 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 really excited about. This is one of them right here. This is the uh, a Lego Express Deluxe. So I kind of had this set. This is an interesting set because it pretty much came with all of these little sets inside of it. Um, I think I had actually bought them each individually when I was a kid, but you get this black train engine right here, uh, log hopper, the passenger cart, and the caboose. There was actually another one. It was like a... Um, tan hopper that you could also get so i remember buying that one as well and this is back when they had metal tracks on this this is just amazing piece of lego history one of my biggest regrets as a kid is i sold this so if it was to buy lego star wars sets and so not a total loss but ah uh, it's so cool it's so cool like the light right here this actually lit up and it was cool because it was connected into the engine and then it was connected here to the wheels and back then it was all about these tracks having these little metal alloys on it. So it would, the power would go into the track itself. So like the track itself was powered and would go into the train and then it would light up things. And even now today, there's still a lot of Lego city builders who prefer working with these nine volt tracks, but I really like it. This is just an amazing piece of Lego history to see here. The like OG Lego train locomotive thing. Looking at more Minecraft stuff, I really want this set. The uh, the in portal, this is really the only way you could get the full in portal. You can get the indoor eyes in different sets. I really want this. The problem is, is it's pretty expensive and I would probably just want to keep it in its box and then not use it. So I don't think Emily's going to let me do that anymore. <laughs> Got another few sealed Minecraft sets. Some are new, some are old. I do like this one here, the first night. That's just kind of cool because it's like the first night in Minecraft. And then this one's kind of interesting to see. So this is the Indiana Jones and the Lost Tube. We just got a remake of this set this year, but it's pretty cool. And you can see the little like uh, R2-D2 and oh, C-3PO yeah. up there. That was cool. They had that in the new set as well. A lot of cool Lego City stuff. I'm really stoked on Lego City, especially what's coming out later this year. I love anything to do with power miners or rock raiders. So this is pretty close, right? So they had the big drill thing going on. I guess they're just mining for ore. There's glow in the dark spiders. If they bite you, you become Spider-Man. And over here, this one I think is just super cool. Look at that giant drill thing going down. Look at all that gold just making it rain and a little bear there. So I'm guessing this takes place in like California. That looks like a California like black bear that you would see. Okay, okay. Now we're getting into like the best part of this video, Lego Star Wars. They just have an unreal collection of Lego Star Wars right now. First, we're gonna start it off. You know me, clone boys. Look at all of those clones. Every time I come in here, it's different. Sometimes I have no clones. Sometimes I have too many clones. Problem with that statement is there's no such thing as too many clones. Look at them. Look at all those purple boys, blue boys, more blue boys, white boys, yellow boys. Ugh, I'm just so excited about these clone troopers. Awesome set I missed out on. I think I do have just the tank itself, but I don't unfortunately have this version of Django Fett. This is an amazing Django Fett. It has the silver jetpack, which they never did for the Mandalorian. I don't know why they went with the darker gunmetal. Looks absolutely beautiful. Love this set completely. Hey, Emily, why don't you tell me about this set here? <gasps> okay, okay. So this is the ghost with black hair Kanan. So apparently something happened with the hair. I'll let Ross talk about that in a second. I don't really know, but I love the ghost. Rebels got me like super into Star Wars this past year. And it's just really cool seeing it out of Lego, even though it looks like a kind of ugly ship. <laughs> like <laughs> even in the show, it looks kind of funky, but I think they did a pretty decent job replicating it out of Lego. I will say I am really excited for the new play skill one 
one coming later this year. There's a rumor about that. So very excited. We also have Zeb here. I loved seeing his little cameo in, in The Mandalorian recently. Hera, Kanan, and then, then this dude. I'm always so happy seeing this here. It's one of my favorites. I love Rebel. This set you could either buy just by itself or you could buy the Phantom One. Oh, a little cool. bit about Black Hair Kanan. So the reason Black Hair Kanan is such a big deal in the LEGO Star Wars collecting universe is because it really had a small limited run. The original like 1.0 wave of the ghosts came with a black haired version and Lego corrected it because he actually has brown hair in the show. And mm -hmm. so this was only like first edition ghosts have it. So that's why it's such a rare figure to have. And then looking down here to BD-1, I love that Lego's making all the different droids. We have the BB-8, we have the Porg. It doesn't count, but it's the same kind of like thing going on. I am just so excited for one day getting a chopper. I don't know why we don't have one yet, but hopefully one day I would buy like 20 of them and I'd be chopper so would happy. Chopper an amazing one to build. Hopefully we do get it in like a few years, right? I hope um, so. The one big bummer I have with this BD-1 is like, great, we got BD-1 from Fallen Order. Can we get like a Fallen Order playset though? That would be sweet. Oh uh, yeah, that's all we got, isn't it? <laughs> they actually have the Tantive 4 here the big appeal for that one for sure besides the Tantive 4 just being an amazing build I really enjoy it I still like to look up at it in my office but Bail Organa that is still the only Bail Organa and he is a beautiful mini figure so that's why I have him in a case like that moving over here to the right we have the Coruscant gunship so what was interesting about this one was this was only available at Target and it came with two red shock troopers. The clerk told me that the shock troopers do still come with a set. I think they might be inside. I think I could see the legs poking out a bit. Really excited that we have a potential chance of getting new shock troopers, uh, which is pretty much like the purple ones we saw last year, but these ones will be red. I'm so excited to see this one. I really want this ship. I don't know. Maybe I can just buy the ship and not the not the figures and maybe get it cheaper. But it's awesome because the ship came out in Rebels a lot as well. I really like this one too. This is uh, General Grievous Starfighter from 2010. I don't actually have this one, but uh, this is that one little Jedi Padawan who was really cocky. Didn't end well for him in the Clone Wars. Spoiler alert. And then this is the little like medical droid that repairs General Grievous every time he gets his face cut off. Down here is the Separatist shuttle. So you know what's interesting about this, Emily? Do you recognize anything about this shuttle? Isn't that the guy that's like, now there are two of them? That is. That is New Gunray. Correct. Okay. And then that's uh, not Greedo, but we'll just call him Greedo. Yeah. This is the same ship that later got made into the Phantom 2, or at least it's a similar design. So if you remember, they got the Phantom 2 in Rebels by fighting against droids, and they got that extra ship to replace the Phantom 1 that fell into the fire. Uh, so it's pretty cool. So this one you could kind of put in the back of the Ghost. It doesn't look good. They made a better set that actually fits it more. But yeah, it's pretty cool that it, it, it's the same set. All right, last one here on the top. This is going to be uh, the Z95 Headhunter. This one is super cool. It comes with General Krell as well as a 501st uh, Trooper. And it should have a 501st pilot that's exclusive to this set in the cockpit. I really like this figure here. I think I have like three or four of this guy because he is just super awesome. And then this guy is a total jerk. But again, you got to watch <laughs> Clone Wars to see it. And it's just cool getting a Z95 because it's kind of a Legends ship. Um, it is canon. But, you know, you mostly associate it more with Legends. Speaking of Legends, check this one out here. This is uh, Jack 14 Stealth Fighter. So this is when, like, LEGO was doing their own, like, fan fiction, essentially. <laughs> but this is actually based off of an E-Wing. There's a lot of rumor that we're actually going to be seeing an E-Wing showing up in the Ahsoka series. So I'm really excited about this. This is a Legends ship, too. This kind of replaces the X-Wing later on in Legends in, like, the Thrawn trilogy. So it's super cool seeing that. This one right here... I always wish I had got this set. So this is the Han Solo Kessel Run Millennium Falcon. Never got this set, but I'm glad I did pick up a pike when they were cheap. This is the only set you can get a pike in, and they sell for about 100 bucks each now. So this is a pretty good value to get this whole set for 180 and you get all of that. I don't know. I really want it. It looks really nice, but I'm going to pass on it. Okay, we're like barely even halfway done <laughs> with LEGO Star Wars right now. First Order Star Destroyer looks awesome. It's so cool having that. But then over here, I really like this one. I bought this one from Bricks and Minifigs a few years ago and still haven't built it. Krennic's Imperial Shuttle. Only way you can get Krennic or K2SO. So this ship has a special place in my heart. In for my heart too. <laughs> for a few reasons. I like it because it's unique. I had a lot of issues in the sequels when they just kept rehashing old original trilogy ships. So I'm glad they made something unique. It has a little remnants of the Tantive Four in it, but I really like it. And you can ride this one in Galaxy's Edge. It's really cool jumping into that ship. And the the last piece of like little Imasaurus history, this is actually Emily's first ever YouTube live stream was building this set. So <laughs> it's one of my favorite sets. It's so special. Speaking of favorite sets, oh, this is my favorite ship from Disney canon. 
the U-Wing. I absolutely love it. I really wish we had gotten another one in Andor. And so what you can do Whoa. is you can put those wings back like that. Those and then, huge. yeah, it's massive. Wow. The big problem I had with the set is it looks great. It's just, this was like too fat here. Uh, that was it. Like if they came up like a brick or two higher, it would have looked a lot nicer. However, this is still just a beautiful set. I, um, I really, really admire this one. All right, guys, are you guys ready for this? Do you guys think you can handle it? They're ready. So May the 4th, we've got a new set. Super Star Destroyer in MIDI scale. And you're probably wondering, man, this is cool, but I wish LEGO made a UCS version of it. Well, guess what? They did. Pew. Check this out. The OG Super Star Destroyer. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't even like consider getting this as a kid because I was like, yeah, there's just no way. Um, super cool. There's a lot of exclusive minifigures in here too. And I really like, <laughs> this is really poor design, honestly. This little Star Destroyer there for scale, just to show you how small the Star Destroyer is compared to a Super Star Destroyer. Okay, so for the minifigures, I do believe that Dingar is exclusive in this set. I mean, you could get Dingar in other sets, but this is an exclusive version of him. And then there's Admiral Piet. So this is the only way you could get Admiral Piet. He's the one that pilots the, or rather commands the Super Star Destroyer. You see him get the promotion to Admiral in Empire Strikes Back when Vader force chokes the guy ahead of him. So it's pretty cool. Look how large this thing is. It's almost 50 inches. That's insane. Wow. Beautiful set. If I had bought this set, there's no way I would open it. I don't. I couldn't. I would cry. Check it out, guys. I got new displays because of all the awesome Star Wars stuff they have. This is an awesome piece of LEGO Star Wars history. It's really interesting. So this is Kylo Ren's shuttle from The Force Awakens from 2015. This is one of those examples where Disney was like really secretive about the IP. So they didn't give LEGO a lot of information or maybe they gave them false information. So it has like totally the wrong play feature. Like it makes no sense. Like it's like a joke in the Lego Star Wars community. We're pretty understanding that, you know, Disney's really protective of the IP. It's unfortunate that the set came out like that, but I remember being like, I'm not getting that set because it didn't look like the movie at all. <laughs> <laughs> These are really cool. So they have some old Republic sets that I really want. I don't know, I'm thinking about getting them. So this one was really cool. I really like that guy, the droid and her, I think her name was Satil. Uh, this is from a video game, Old Republic, not Knights of the Old Republic. Don't get those two confused. And then down here, this one is amazing. They actually have a few of these for some reason. The Jedi Defender Cruiser. This one is awesome. Uh, I don't know too much about the lore. I just know the trailers for the games look amazing. And then boom, check that out. A Jakku Quad Jumper. That's that set or that ship that blew up in like two seconds <laughs> in Force Awakens. And they made a whole set of it. <laughs> Guess what? More Lego Star Wars. Never had this set here. I had the other two versions of the NTT. So this one is really good. It's highly regarded. It's a little bit smaller, but I kind of like it. The 2007 one was like massive. And I love the uh, the Nabu fighter there. He looks really cool. Super cool to see this. This is actually my first time seeing this set in person. And didn't the 2007 one come with like 30 droids or yeah, something like that? Yeah, the 2007 one, it was like twice this size. Came with like 30 droids, a droidy cuss, some pilots. It was nuts. Oh, that's wild. Homing spider droid. We've gotten a few of these. They haven't really changed the model of them too much, but I mean, how could you really change a ball with legs? I can't believe I almost missed the UCS Slave one. There's just so much here. Still looks great. I do have this set new in box. I refuse to open it. It's a whole thing at the house, but it's super awesome seeing it. Again, another amazing find here is the uh, Republic Frigate. This one comes with Commander Wolf from Phase 1 and a Wolfpack Trooper, as well as a few Jedi like Quinlan Voss awesome set again i also have this set and it's in the box because i'm terrible all right i'm sure there's plenty i'm missing but check it out there's more lego star wars over here so we have the in my opinion the best play set for the y-wing that they've ever done this is from rogue one and it comes with the uh not admiral akbar admiral akbar guy radis. <laughs> admiral radis down here we have the ucs version of the y-wing i didn't pick this one up and it's a bummer because the y-wing I'm, I'm kind of figuring out it's probably one of my favorite ships in Star Wars, at least from the original trilogy. It looks great. It's just a little bit too big for me. But now that I have the X-Wing, maybe I should pick it up. Down here, Imperial Star Destroyer. This one is from, I think, like 2007? Oh, 2006. I was close. This is back when Lego transitioned from yellow figure faces and stuff to uh, the more tan ones. And you can also tell here that the color of plates um is the older version of gray not the newer version of gray so just pretty interesting like time when they were like phasing out the gray 
and then changing the flesh tones on the IP stuff like that. You know, this is something that's pretty interesting. I normally don't make a stop here, but check this out. So you could get an Empire or Rebel Insignia so you could put your minifigs around it. It's actually a cool way to display those minifigures. I really like it. And looking at this very fun special case right in the front of the store, way at the bottom, they have one of the weirdest Lego themes ever made, Fabuland. These are just such weird little dudes. I remember seeing these at Brickworld Chicago for the first time, I believe, and they kind of remind me of like Animal Crossing characters. Like that kind of looks like that, that landlord guy, what's, what, I don't remember his name, but he looks like him. Oh, Tom Nook, that was it. All right, so now I think Ross wants to pick up some stuff for his new Minecraft village. Again, stay tuned, Ross is making content now and he's pretty excited about it. So I came here looking for uh, villagers. I really just wanted like normal brown villagers and they didn't have any of those, unfortunately. It doesn't look like there's a lot of villagers in general. All I really see here are the desert villagers and a few other variations. So I might just have to get those online, but I am planning to pick up a few of the Minecraft sets and then I really want that witch guy way back there you see him next to the dogs I think I'm gonna grab him too oh okay all right you 90s kids big fan of Nickelodeon check this out the clerk actually let me play with the slime here again uh we had a lot of comments about this in the last time we showed it so we figured we'd show it to you guys in closer depth what was interesting about this is that it's a hundred dollars for these two little bricks here and then a green windshield piece and you know the main play feature of this is that you can like open it like just like in the game when you defeat it four more come out i think only two can fit in here it's lego what are you gonna do super cool seeing this i really want this but i, I don't think emily's gonna let me get it yeah maybe not today <laughs> i don't know ross is picking out all the different minecraft sets he wants he also grabbed some minifigures too you happy ross yeah got a box full of boxes minecraft so much boxes. stuff ross is thrilled box big minecraft box. guy now right know, big minecraft all right. Ross and I just kind of rushed out of there because we were late for a doctor's appointment. And I think we were having too much fun because we lost track of time. But anyways, y'all, I have all the Lego that Ross purchased today. I don't really know exactly what it is. It's all Minecraft. I've never played Minecraft, but I do have a gaming PC. It showed up yesterday. It's still in the box. We've been busy, but I was told by multiple individuals that I should start playing Minecraft. But now it's time for a car haul. Car haul. Car haul. Out of everything in this box of Lego, Ross told me to focus mostly on the animals, but I want to try to describe the sets as well. So this is a pirate ship, probably. Something kind of cool about it is that it comes with Minecraft Jack Sparrow. Shoo, 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 shoo. This part broke off of it at some point. He's also pretty excited about finding this beach set today. But now for the animals, we have this one here. He told me it's a dolphin. I don't really see it. I think it looks more like a jet plane. We got this wizard here that was apparently $40 because it only comes in one set. And then this Lord of the Rings armor to the side. Apparently it's really expensive. It's like the hand of Sauron or something. I'm not really sure. And a turtle. Very cute. Anyways, I'm gonna go home and have some lunch, but thank you everyone so much for hanging out with us today. It's always so much fun going to Bricks and Minifigs here in Austin, Texas. Definitely come check out their store whenever you're in town here. Seriously, their stock is always rotating. Like it looks like a different store every month. It's crazy. I'm about to head home now and grab some food, but thank you everyone so much for watching. Thank you so much to Bricks and Minifigs in Austin, Texas for sponsoring this video, and we will see you next time. Bye.